Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be showing you how to minimize diffraction spikes by properly wiring your Schmidt Cassegrain and Hyperstar setup or your RASA setup using a 3D printed cable router. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now before I get started, I just wanted to mention that I got this 3D printed cable router off of Cloudy Nights. Now there's a ton of people that make these and they're usually about $10 to $15. I really like this one though because there's holes for uh, zip ties. So if you do have a Schmidt Cassegrain and you're using Hyperstar or a Rasa, these are really nice. You know, or if you're a 3D printing guru, which I am not, you could probably print one of these yourself. So this is what you'll need and it also really helps to have some electric tape. Now if you're 3D printing your own cable router, or even if you're buying one, you want to make sure that the cable router's diameter is half the diameter of your main telescope. So this is an 8 inch telescope here, so I would want to use a cable router that has a diameter of 4 inches. If I'm using an 11 inch telescope, you'll want to make sure that your cable router has a diameter of 5 and a half inches, and that's going to give you the best results in your images. Now technically a circular cable router would actually give you better results, so a circle that just touches the, out, the inner obstruction and then goes to the outside edge. But it's a little bit more complicated to route your cables that way and to produce it, so really the semicircle is the best way to go and the difference really isn't that great. Now this is one of those projects where it'd be really great if you had three arms and three hands to finish, but I'll try my best here, especially on camera. Uh, so. You're going to uh, put it on here and really the, the most important thing in this whole process, well, number one is be very conscious of your corrector plate. You don't want to touch it. So if you want to wear gloves before you start, you can, uh, but just kind of have that in the back of your mind the whole time. And then the other really important thing is you don't want to start cinching things down until you're absolute, absolutely ready. So if I take my power cord here, I want to make sure that it comes all the way up against the uh, the cable router. You don't want it to be you know diagonally or like that because then you're going to be pulling this off a little bit. So you want everything to be nice and flush. So hold everything down and make sure that your cable comes all the way against it before you start cinching anything down. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and grab my zip ties and I'm going to. Um, start them, but I'm not going to secure them. All right, so I'm going to start with the power cord here. Just loop that around a zip tie. And again, I'm just going to get this started. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down yet. All right, okay, I'm gonna get another one. Okay. And one more here. Okay, awesome. So now I'm gonna do the power cable. Again, we wanna make sure everything's nice and level here and coming all the way out. So I'll get this one started as well. All right, there we go. So that's that's a good start. Okay, so here comes the trickiest part of the whole thing, and that is to make sure that this stays flush. So I'm gonna again take my wires and push them all the way back. Make sure I have enough room to do that. And then tighten things down. Now as you're doing this, you want to use your fingers and make sure that your wires are following that circular path as you're tightening. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so with the power cord looking good, now I just need to do the uh, USB cable. So again, just wanna make sure that you follow this circular path here as best as you can. So I'm gonna just tighten things down a little bit here. Okay. And right there, that's looking actually pretty good. Tighten that down a bit more. And then to help me on this part, I'm actually gonna plug in the rear of the cable so the cables support themselves a little bit. All right, there we go. And tighten these down a little bit more. All right, there we go. So that's pretty good right there. Now before I start cutting anything, I just wanna make sure that everything looks nice and circular as much as I can. So my power cable, Feel it around the perimeter there, it looks pretty good. Same with my USB cable. Just make sure again, these are tightened about as far as I can go. Now to cut these, you're not gonna wanna do it right here where they can scratch your corrector plate. So that's the neat part about this is it just comes right off. So you can just unplug your cables and uh, take care of these. All right, so with the ends of the zip ties chopped off, the final thing you really wanna do is make sure that these square plastic pieces on the zip ties don't intrude into that light path either. So you want them to kind of line up more or less with the wire. So I'm just gonna turn them. This one doesn't matter so much because it's not in the light path anyway. So I'm just gonna look at these bottom ones and make sure those are out of the way as well. Okay, so as you can see, it turned out pretty nicely. The cords are pretty spherical. Now, one thing I really would recommend, and I'm going to be doing this soon myself, is actually replacing this stock uh, ZWO USB cable with one that uses spherical wire. That way you don't get these edges creeping in to the, uh, the light train here. So. This is just a USB 3 to B cable, so that's what I'm going to be replacing that with, is a spherical one, and then it will work out even better. In the time since I initially filmed this video, I did make the switch to the round USB cable, and just like the power cord, this makes it really nice to complete that semicircle, so I definitely would recommend making this change. Now another recommendation I have is taking electric tape and basically going all the way around your cable router here just to make sure that everything is nice and flush. And that really helps to ensure that you've got uh, spherical cables here. Uh, another thing that you can do if you want to have this be a little bit more permanent, you can take a piece of tape and uh, tape your cables to your camera. And you could also, you know, put some tape down here. That way you don't get any movement of your cable router. So. There's a few things you could do to make this uh, even better. I just wanted to keep this video a little shorter. Now I thought it would be helpful if I showed you a comparison of an image I took with the cable router and without the cable router. Now this is the uh, Horsehead Nebula, and you can see here that I have two clear, distinct diffraction spikes running through this star here. Now they're not the worst looking thing, um, but they're not at right angles to each other like other diffraction spikes are from different optical systems. Now, if you compare that to an image I took with the cable router, you can see that the diffraction is a lot more diffuse and you don't really see those distinct spikes. It looks a little bit more natural, I would say. Now, again, comparing them both together, I think they both images still look good, uh, but it definitely looks a little bit more natural with the cable router. Now, if I show you an image of the Orion Nebula, same thing here without the cable router, you can see these di um, distinct diffraction spikes um, going you know, right through those stars. And then if I switch over 
to an image that I took with the cable router, you can see that the star is a lot more diffuse. So those are uh, two examples to show you really the difference and why you would want to install this in the first place. All right, everyone. Well, that is how you install a cable router on the RASA telescope. It's a very similar process for a Schmidt Cassegrain and a Hyperstar. But anyways, I hope that this helps you minimize the uh, issues that you might see with diffraction in your images and maximize the enjoyment that you get out of your images. So as always, uh, thanks so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to subscribe for more equipment reviews and astrophotography tips and tricks. And as always, have a great day and clear skies.